All right, so we're gonna do a quick little update today. Uh, while I have the time, I'm working in the fish room. Uh, finally, I get to work in my fish room. Um, I've been busy with work, so I've been working late a lot, and it's just been making me really, really tired. I think that's one of the issues that I also have, uh, sleeping. I don't get very good sleep. So um, anyways, yeah, I'm gonna rush into the fish room, kind of loud, uh, turn off this fan, exhaust fan. Um, Oliver got into a box of raisins yesterday, an entire box of raisins, big box, big box. And um, like I put like a small dent into the box and uh, yeah, he finished the box off. So uh, last night at some point in time, he came in here and uh, relieved himself on the fish room floor. I don't blame him. That's a lot of fiber for a dog, uh, a box of raisins. That's a lot. Um, so yeah, uh, his stomach probably wasn't very used to that so uh yeah can't blame him but uh three little spots of poop that i had to clean up this morning not fun but uh anyways um what i'm gonna get started on now is this rack i'm gonna finish it i have to finish the top portion and let me turn that off i don't know how bad that is i had the lapel on but still um so i'm gonna set you guys well maybe i should put my uh, it's over here really so it's got a little bit of weeble wobble to it and basically I probably have about an eighth of an inch to a sixteenth of an inch in one corner that's a little bit lower or higher. I think it's lower than the rest. And um, to fix that what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a piece of uh, half inch or three quarter inch plywood. I think it's, I think it's like five eighths inch plywood. So it's just over half an inch. And I'm just going to put that on top of this and that's going to be a nice flat surface. Um, you don't want to shim your tank because that puts an uneven pressure point under one corner. You also don't want to fill up a tank that weeble wobbles like that. You know when you sit at a chair or a table and it just has that one little, you know, problem where you put the salt pack or matches under and it fixes it? You don't want to do that to your tank. Um, you want to, you know, uh, you want to level out the thing that the tank is sitting on and one of my ways that I've been doing that that has been working it worked with this 100, which was not perfectly level. Uh, I leveled the stand, and then to ensure that I had a flat surface for the tank to sit on, I put a piece of, that's actually half inch plywood, and then over here on that 75, uh, that's like 5 eighths inch plywood. Um, and I don't go with like the nicest, it's not furniture grade, but it's not that particle board. It is true plywood. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get that put on. I'm gonna take this take, tank, take this tank down. It's kind of like a tongue twister. Take, tank, tank, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna take the tank down and then I'm gonna put that on, then I'm gonna put the tank back on and uh, I might go with a fill test just to kind of see. I'm waiting for substrate, which I can probably go pick up tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning on Monday. Um, and I think I'm gonna try and have this out on Monday, but um, I, I can go pick that up and then I'm gonna dirt this just a little bit, which eventually, here pretty soon, I'm gonna, I'm gonna release the video of the dirt I'm using because I think I need to do a little bit more research on it just so I have the information available for you guys in the links. Uh, but everything that I've, uh, I've done with it so far, it hasn't hurt shrimp, it hasn't hurt anything. Um, yeah, so it's, it seems to be doing a really good job. But um, anyways, I'm gonna get that done and um, I've also got some water changes to get done. And if I'm lucky, I will get some other fish into the 125 for the puffer. Um, before I put him in there, I want other fish in there to, you know, get the cycle stabilized and going before I just add him. Um, but it is ready for the most part. So um, I'm happy with it now. Um, See, so yeah, I took out all of the helanthium. I don't know if I've said that yet. I put in a few crypts, uh, crypt red undulatas from that 75 that I took down. And uh, the red tiger lotus finally starting to take off. I might add another red tiger lotus to this side um, so that they can, you know, grow up and kind of shade him because he, he doesn't like it too bright. So uh, he or she, but um, yeah. So anyways, we're gonna get that done. And I'm also gonna show you a few other things in the fish room. All right, here's something I was excited about. This little guy right there, that is a, a panda uh, Corydora that I was able to breed accidentally, not really trying. He just was successful 
at surviving the horde of rainbows and Corydoras in here. Um, so yeah, pretty excited about that little guy. Didn't even try, but that was a goal. That's why I got the panda Corydoras. So um, yeah, I was happy to see him. I think that he's my only one that was able to make it. Um, but yeah, something I was pretty happy about. All right, and then I also want to do an update on the uh, purple, sc purple spotted gudgeon, uh, Magrunda Magrunda. Um, they're doing very, very well. They're growing fast too. Like, uh, definitely, I, I'm gonna say definitely faster than rainbows. So there's like one, two, three, four, I think five that I can, five actually maybe six in that shot that I can see right now. And they've just been getting fed baby brine basically uh, like two to three times a day, every single day. Um, I'm about to start supplementing some, um, you know, some fry foods, maybe tetracolor granules and some other stuff in there as well. But uh, they've been growing really, really well. Uh, let me see if I can't get some close-ups. All right, so you can actually see the purple spots on them, which is uh, really interesting. I mean, because they're, they're small. They're... Now they're over a centimeter, um, maybe like a half inch, roughly. Um, there's a good looking one right there, but uh, I gotta say these were really, really easy to raise up. Um, just, yeah, incredibly easy. Um, and then there's quite a few in there. I, I, I'm in no shortage of them. Um, I do intend to try and get another spawn off of these because I'd rather not just have brothers and sisters. Um, it's something I haven't done yet, but um, these will be up on the website once they hit about an inch to an inch and a half. Um, and uh, the website is coming. It's, it's just about ready. There's a few things that are really annoying me about it, so I've got to get those fixed. But um, Oh my god, look at the eye. The eye has got that like yeah, iridescent sheen over it. It's just so, it, it's, it's heavy metal. That, that is one heavy metal fish. Um, even at the little baby stage, they have that. The eye is just like white glazed over. You can't see into it. It's like a zombie eye. It's pretty cool. Yeah, but there's quite a few of them in here. I mean, you don't see a lot because they really, they really like to hide in this Java moss that I've offered them. But I mean, I suspect I'd have it around 50, I mean, minimum 20. Um, you really start looking in there and you really start to see a whole lot more. But uh, yeah, they're doing really good. And um, eventually I'd really like to get a how to breed video out on these guys. But uh, yeah. All right, so in here we have a, um, what I'm assuming is a killifish. One second. Oh, there he is. Um, I'm assuming this is a, um, uh, a Niger Delta. And it looks like I only had one survive. Now this is a spawn I assumed I, I messed up and for whatever reason the, uh, the eggs weren't fertile. Um, I've been having some issues with... Um, so I've been having some issues with egg fertilization on my, uh, my killifish. And I think my main issue was uh, originally I went way too dry. It was like bone dry. Um, and then after that I went way too wet. And um, I've got it dialed down to what I think is going to be the right amount now. And when I thought I had it way too wet, I dried it out a little bit, I think. Um, that's where he came from. But uh, I was still doing it, I think, overall too wet. And most of them, that's why I only have one in there, most of them were just dying while incubating in the peat because they were just, the eggs were just fungusing over because it was too moist of a condition for them um, to remain fertile. So, um, yeah, that was just one lone survivor. Uh, that It's a five gallon tank and it was filled up halfway with a couple mystery snails in there. And I would feed the mystery snails green beans, um, just some juvenile ones uh, and a filter. But, you know, it started out with soft water and then eventually I just topped it off with, um, with hard water one day, like just 50%. And here's a bunch of hard water straight out of the tap. Um, it was dechlorid and all that, but I mean, still, he, he went from 100 TDS to, you know, 350 in a day. Maybe like 200 in a day because half of it, 100, the other half, 350 roughly. It's going to spike you up pretty hard though. Um, so yeah, and, and he lived through it. He's fine. I mean, it's maybe like a, a similar to a plop and drop where you just take him out of whatever water and put him into your water. Um, and, but he's been doing fine. Since I've noticed him, he's been growing way, way faster. 
um, like insanely fast. I noticed him when he was just like a tiny little guy, like uh, maybe a centimeter, you know, uh, less than a half of an inch. And then uh, I found him as he just darted by one day. I was like, oh my God, there's a fish in there. And then I started feeding baby brine and, uh, you know, some, uh, some granules. And uh, he's on Grendel's now, uh, or just barely on their Grendel's. And I mean, he has gone from that little bit in like a week, two weeks, doubled like tripled in size basically so uh, he's growing fast now that he has decent food but um yeah uh these are my last two spawns that i've harvested and i do expect these to go over well i, I after seeing him i was about to give up on it. i was about to just say man i, I think i'm just going to get rid of all achilles because i just don't think they're for me I, i've spent six months with no success luckily he showed up because now i'm i really love achilles again at least they're holding my interest um if it was just something that you know wasn't meant for me it wasn't meant for me there's a million other fish out there um but yeah i've got some lows here that i've pulled and um i've also got and like i've been pulling a lot of eggs i don't know what changed but i think maybe in the summertime it was just too hot because i was pulling eggs and i was like getting 30 and then i wasn't properly incubating them now i think we're a little bit cooler because we're into the winter and i'm just pulling hundreds of eggs out of out of these tanks uh it was pretty insane to to find all these eggs that i found um but yeah anyways let's take another look at him and then we'll look at something else uh i ran away and I'm not sure if it's a he or she yet. It looks like it might be a she. But uh, sorry for that. We'll just have to wait till it, you know, grows up a little bit. It's definitely a killifish, though. Definitely a killifish. Um, and I'm just, it's already in hard water, so I'm just going to keep it hard. Because uh, that'll be easier for me. It shouldn't have any issues growing out in it. Um, and then in here, I have my low female. Because that, me that male is just, he is mean. And he beats her up something fierce, so that's why that water is so brown. I'm just trying to heal her with some uh, catapa leaves, and uh, yeah. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, move this tank so I can get that piece of wood under it. I just take these one final rinse too. Seventy-five. Not necessarily fun to move. They're kind of big. That's down, and go get that piece of wood. Now this wood is not perfectly straight, but uh, the, um, the tank will, will fix that for us. So long as it's a flat surface, uh, the tank will, will, will set it flat. I'm trying to figure out, because that has a bow, which end to put down. I'm gonna go with the bow facing up. It's actually be a good time to show you guys kind of how I constructed this. I do have footage of me constructing it, but uh, whether or not that's able, like I'm able to actually get that out, if I have the time to get that out, it's kind of an unknown. Um, you can kind of see, I've got it up on a single cinder block, uh, just a single cinder block high, but I've got four cinder blocks, uh, these little square ones. And uh, you can kind of see the frame construction there. Now that's just the lower frame, the upper frame is different. So the weight of the tank, this is, this is like basically, um, you know, how big, how wide and long the tank is, that piece of plywood. Um, so the weight of the tank is going to basically be put on these screws and uh, and these two by fours, I have four two by fours uh, because the weight is going to first. It's basically going to start right here and push down right there and there. It's not going to rest on those. And the same thing for the other side. It's uh, the edge of the tank will be right there. So it's going to press down on this two by four that runs all the way along, which is going to press down on these two by fours that I have securely fastened in there. And then I also added a couple more 2x4s snugly under it with some screws. Um, so that's where the, the main amount of load is going to be. Now a 2x4 standing on end can roughly hold 800 pounds. Now the longer 
you know, the two by four is the the less it could hold, obviously. But uh, I mean, that's just because it'll begin to bow. But uh, with four of these two by threes, and that's not actually a two by four, I cut it down to a two by three so that this other tank could fit in and I wouldn't have any excess bulging out because I'm limited on space right there and right there. Um, yeah, so I, I went with a two by three and then we also have a two by four with a couple screws in it there. And then I do have two by fours on the outside of it as well. Whoa. Um, in case any of the weight is dispersed through the screws over to that 2x4, but uh, unlikely to be honest. And then there's, uh, there's quite a few screws in it. Um, so yeah. Now what we're going to go ahead and do is get this fastened on. And you can see the bow of the board is like that. And uh, I could put it the other way and the tank would set it flat. But I'm going to throw a few screws in it. So I'm going to set it flat myself. rocking thing anymore. I don't get any more rocking noises or movements. No, I mean I can jiggle it, but you can see the water. Well, that's partially also from the, <laughs> the sponge filters, but there's no there's no more play in that tank. Uh, and that's really like that's that's what I like to use to, you know, give myself a flat surface to set these larger tanks on and really anything over a five or ten gallon you really need a flat surface I mean really any tank needs a flat surface but um, yeah I mean the bigger the tank the more vital it is that it is on a, a flat plumb level surface uh, and things can be out of level I mean nothing has to be perfectly level uh, tanks can have a little more water on one side basically but uh, yeah so anyways uh, I'm not ready to do a whole lot with this I might get it cleaned up a little bit um, but that'd be it. I'm still waiting on gravel and they're closed I think today so I don't think I can pick any up but yeah. Uh, that's it for the 75 rack. I just gotta get some uh, substrate and then it's basically done. So uh, I'm definitely looking forward to it. And then here's Mr. or Mrs. Fajaka. She's just buried. And she just does that all the time. Or he. He or she. I don't know. I'm just gonna refer to him as a he for now unless you know until we get some eggs uh, like Zach's but uh, yeah he's doing good this is what he does 90% of the day just sits sits there does nothing so I mean if you're thinking about getting puffers especially these bigger ones they're not always very active like either they're eating hunting or sleeping and like resting which is like 90% of the day they're just gonna kind of sit there um, so yeah Anyways, I think that's kind of it for right now. If I think of anything else to show or share, we will do just that. I've got to get some water changes done on these uh, these shrimp tanks down here. Um, I was going to show the, the male super red that I like literally brought back from the dead. Poor guy looked like Skeletor when I got him. Um, but yeah, I think that's it for right now. All right, so real quick, we're gonna get a little bit of footage of the Fajaka because, well, he or she normally doesn't move from that spot, and uh, they've decided he or she has decided to get up, and I'm saying he or she now because I'm not sure. After after seeing Zach's uh, lay all those eggs, you know, um, I would kind of instinctually name it a he, but you know, after seeing that, it definitely could be either or. But um, and she's. She's acting a little bit funny, too. Hopefully she's not about... I mean, I wouldn't mind, but hopefully she's not about to lay a bunch of eggs like Zach's did. Um, I'm trying to think. I, I think she's eaten today, so I fed her some, some brown mystery snails. And um, I think she ate. Uh, she might have eaten one. She might have not eaten any because there's one there. There's two, three there. So um, they've obviously been able to leave... Um, and get away from her. So I'm not sure that she tried. And then I tried to give her a red wriggler and she didn't eat that either. So 
Maybe I do have a she, and maybe she is just, you know, about to lay a bunch of eggs. Not hungry, otherwise she'd be eating those snails. I mean, there's snails all over her tank. So. I'm not quite sure. Maybe her tank's getting a little bit small for her, and I mean, it definitely is. To have a, a Fajaca this size and a 40 breeder is not, it's not what I would like. Um, she looks pretty though. Getting some good footage. It's definitely nice to see her swim around because she does not normally do that. Maybe she's just being active. And I just don't get to see this. I mean, I'm in here a lot, but I'm not definitely not in here all the time. Yeah, I guess she's just she's just being a little bit active then, because uh, that kind of startled her. Oh, look at that! Look at that fin! You see that tail fin? It's like it's taller than her, like by a good bit when she uh, when she like opens it up completely. And they can really, really move. Like puffers are fast when they want to be. I mean, literally, with that tail fin that big, and you, I mean, you look, look at an angel. See how small that tail fin really is compared to her. And when she opens it, it's 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 wider than her by a good amount. Um, and literally, like just a flick of it, and she's moving really, really fast. And I'm assuming, you know, when I've seen her move, she's not really even trying that hard. Um, but yeah. yeah. I mean, I can definitely tell I want her in a new tank right now. Very beautiful. Yeah, those stripes are just nice. I really, really like the stripes of the Fajaca. Just got to get that 125 set up. Basically, I mean, it's ready to go. All I need to do is get some other fish in there. I need to decide and think what I'm going to put in there. Um, probably going to go... Yeah, I'm definitely going to stick at least two or three bristlenose in. Um, I just want to QT everything before I put them in. And I might put her in second. I think she'd be... Me, or, yeah, put her in first even. Like, I could probably put her in now. And then, I mean, it's definitely cycled. It, it was handling the uh, the mystery snails and you know I was feeding those guys a can of green beans a day uh, for like a good month straight so this can definitely handle a huge bio load so I, I should be able to put her in and that being said she might go in very soon but um, and I'll definitely capture that um, but I've got a male bristle nose in here and then there's a female in her tank uh, there was at least. I moved it down here to try and hopefully graze on some of that. Um, and then I want to say, do I not have one more albino bristlenose somewhere? Maybe I do, maybe I don't. But I'll probably put the male and female in there. Um, that way, you know, yeah, who knows, maybe they'll breed. Um, that and I, I know I want some bristlenose in there. Uh, I don't think I want to risk putting these super reds in. Um, and then I'll definitely have some Siamese algae eaters and quite possibly some of these Florida flagfish too. Um, you know, I'm going to get a little algae team in there. And then I'd also like to get some fish that are, are, are fairly small, um, but not too small. Um, that's why I'm thinking the uh, Magrunda Magrunda purple spotted gudgeons. Um, I just throw the five of them in there, and uh, that would be it. The five of them, some algae eaters, and her, or him, and uh, and that would be good. So she might actually go in. She might go in tonight or tomorrow. I tested the water on it. It's got low nitrates. It's uh, sitting under 20 with no nitrites. 
no ammonia, uh, but nothing's been in it for about a week, so that makes sense that the plants would be consuming uh, a lot of what was in there if nothing else is being produced. And I've thrown a little bit of food in there, um, so she might actually go in soon. And then what that would do is I could turn this, this 40 here into a QT tank for everything else that's going in there with her. I just grab everything that I want to put in with her, and I could put that Siamese algae eater in immediately, basically. And the same goes for the bristle mose. But uh, everything else, I could just put it in here, QT it, run meds through it, uh, like Levamisol, Praziquantanol, some General Cure, uh, Metronidazole, basically everything she's gotten. And then, uh, you know, after a few months, two months of them being in here, uh, then they could go in with her. I think that's what I'm going to do, you guys. I think I think that's what's gonna happen because I don't like looking at her in this tank. I, I, I just don't think I think at this size, like she's at like six inches. I think I think we're pushing. Yeah, I think we're pushing it with a 40 breeder, and it's time to just go ahead and give her the 125 because it's ready. Yeah, I think that's what's gonna happen. So after this video, I'll have another video. Um, I'm gonna do a water change on this, get it prepped, and I think I think she's going in. So, um, yeah. Anyways, I think that's where we're gonna end this video, and um, I will see you guys on the next one. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put her in.